Mapping how our neurons communicate, that's only half the puzzle. Applying those findings to create medicine or to enhance surgical procedures, well, that could be the future of neuroresearch. Now, one area that's making strides in manipulating nerves is prosthetics. A technique that reassigns nerve endings is giving hope and control back to amputees. Are you ready? Set, go. Tiffany Johnson is a happy wife. Oh, good job, Luke. And a mother of three. You're a sneaky Sue. Yes, you are. There you go. Oh. You can be on this one for now, and then you guys can trade. In a minute. As most working moms do, she struggles with the day-to-day -day sometimes. Please. Give Natalie a chance. She won't want to be on for long. Please. Okay, are you ready? But not too long ago, she was struggling for her life. We were on a cruise. We had decided early on in the cruise that we wanted to for sure snorkel in Nassau because it was really good snorkeling. And so we went out to the reef. I was just staring at the fish, enjoying the view, and I felt like I had bumped into something, uh, like a tug on my arm. And I remember even just thinking, oh, what did I bump into? And then when I turned, I was literally face to face with the shark. Fear took over and it just dawned on me what was going on. My whole arm was in his mouth. And I remember hearing the sound of my screaming through the snorkel tube. My body wanted to give up. I was seeing almost like a movie reel of my kids, and I remember just thinking, no, we are not going there. And then when I yanked my arm finally that last time, his jaws opened, and I pulled my arm out, and it was just gone. Um, it was a mangled stump. At that point, I just began to swim back with my left arm, and I just prayed. <laughs> I prayed in the Holy Spirit, and I I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I need to get back to that boat. We stopped at Paradise Island, because that was the closest shoreline. We're yelling out for help. They're like, no, we don't have anything for her here. Um, you're going to have to go to the main port. That's where the hospital is. All in all, I was probably on that boat for at least 30 minutes before we hit the main port. And all I had was a beach towel to stop the bleeding. She had her first operation in Nassau, but they could only do so much. She needed to get back home. We had the Ministry of Tourism in the Bahamas involved. We had the embassy involved and customs involved. They were all trying to figure out a way to get us back to the U.S. Um, the problem was we didn't have passports with us. With the help of their pastor back home in Charlotte, North Carolina, she was privately medevaced off the island. It was just miracle after miracle after miracle. But it's been a tough journey since, relearning how to do one simple tasks, like eating. It's like difficult to yeah. keep it steady. But Johnson hasn't let it slow her down. And once I have my prosthetic, that'll help a ton, because it'll give me another hand to function with, you know. She's a poster child for positivity. Yeah. How are you getting with that left hand? I'm decent. It's the hardest part is holding the paper, honestly. And also the perfect candidate for a cutting edge prosthetic that she can control with her mind. We're ready to rock and roll. Today, Johnson is receiving her first okay. smart arm at Ortho Carolina's Reconstructive Center for Lost Limbs. Around. The people here have harrowing stories, but the ambiance is more friend's house than doctor's office. Doctors Brian Loeffler and Glenn Gaston are two of a few surgeons worldwide pioneering a state-of-the-art surgical procedure. He actually has implantable sensors in all the different muscles. Enabling the nervous system to communicate with artificial limbs. One of the things that we're doing surgically is trying to improve the interface between the human being and the new technologies that are out there. And so by rewiring their nervous system, we can actually allow them to interface with a prosthetic in a new way that's more intuitive. One of these ways is called targeted muscle reinnervation, or TMR. You ready to go? Yes. The surgery transfers nerves that control the amputated limb 
and rewires them into alternative muscle sites. So when you go to do something, for example, to, to raise your thumb, your brain sends that signal down your spinal cord through a network of nerves that comes down the forearm and into the muscles of the thumb and the hand. Beautiful, open. When the hand and forearm even are lost, you still have that same signal that can be sent down, but it doesn't have a target. So the, the idea of target is taking a different muscle to take the nerve ending and to implant that into a nerve that's going to that muscle. Beautiful. Relax. Now it doesn't have a dead end. It has a muscle, so it can cause a contraction of the muscle. And when the muscle contracts, it generates an electrical signal that can be detected by a sensor that's on the skin. And that signal can then be transduced into a prosthetic to allow the thumb function to, to occur. We do these nerve transfers. The brain is sending the normal signal downstream, so they just think, close my hand, and they close their hand. We have patients now who put on their limbs for the first time and within an hour are performing all the functions that we can ask it to perform. And the real unique challenge with Tiffany's was the sh very short residual limb that we had to work with and the very small number of muscles. We had to be fairly creative with which nerves we rerouted to the few muscles that we had remaining. But she has been an incredible person to it all, and I think her drive and her spirit to get through everything is uh, really exemplary, and she's rubbed off on a lot of our other patients. Um, Pace of technology, particularly in this area, is mind-boggling. It seems like every few months something else is coming along, something else is coming along, and I think to some degree the surgeries outpace the technology. Some of the innovations on the technological side will include the ability to have sensory prosthetic. That's all you. Outstanding. But essentially, pressure is detected when that prosthetic touches something, and that can send a signal through their own nervous system all the way up to their brain to tell them that their prosthetic hand is touching something. And the ability to touch and perceive things without looking at them is what makes a hand a hand. We're going to see that these prosthetics are going to become more and more lifelike, more and more human-like. Johnson has a lot to be thankful for. But above all, she still credits her faith. A couple of days after the attack, and I started reading Psalm 18, and I mean, I couldn't keep it together. Where it says, um, the grave wrapped its ropes around me, death itself stared me in the face. That's exactly what happened, you know, that I was staring face to face at that shark. And then later he reached down from heaven, he drew me out of deep waters. You know, it's just, I just could, I was just in awe of reading this and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is my story. Yeah. <laughs>